everybody, this is Don Reed coming to you from DC9 and I'm super excited tonight to bring you Noise Answer to Shoegaze Psych Rock Noise Awesomeness. This is Serena Manish. Yeah, my name is Emil and um, um, I'm from the south of Norway, the wilderness of Norway. I play guitar and I write the songs. So how did the band meet up and start? We uh, did a lot of, you know, trying out different things for years before we really started. Like, showing people stuff out we were still in other bands or we had different obligations but this has always kind of been my my uh, my my dream kind of life's work in a way so I finally had to just there's no way around it I just have to do this so we fully did it we did a couple of EPs in the early 2000 but never really started as a band so you can really count that it kind of started in 2005. All right, so how would you describe your sound to an audience that might not quite know what exactly your sound is? We all, we're all huge, huge fans of a strong melody and a beauty can still, you know, be found in the, in the sound of a real, real ugly guitar sound that's still real beauty. Pounding lots of rhythmic stuff, pounding beats like it ocean of a mountain of sound that's like a like a, a deep forest of sound it's like a you know I like to say that's kind of originated in uh, you know the Norwegian forest dark forests they have a lot of beauty to them they have a lot of there's a lot of depth to them you can wander far into them and you can still watch them from from distance and watch just just them for what it is yeah. it's it is now majestic and beautiful and rotten and alive alive all in the same you know all in the same go yeah so it's it's like all of this stuff you know all right, cool so you recently released your second I want to say studio album because I know you recorded in a cave pretty much right we uh, yeah we recorded I found this incredible place I never a friend of me kind of accidentally took me in there uh, it was like where I had to walk through catacombs and then suddenly just boom it's almost like um, underground sacred place and I wonder why is no one ever recording like I've recorded something hi-fi in here mm -hmm. like real good recording equipment but still like uh, we all just do it ourselves this is an amazing place mm -hmm. this is incredible okay so one of my favorite songs is the opening song I showed this ah. like when I play it I just imagine driving in a desert like at 3 a.m. Like whenever I play it, I do have it on like repeat, and I just that's just what I <laughs> what oh, I thank see. You. Yeah. Wow. So I want to know like what went into the creation of that song. What we really wanted to emphasize what what was this, you know, leave your equipment behind, mm -hmm. leave your like physical world behind, and just throw yourself into the imagination of a place. Just like you said, like um, I could literally, I wanted to see what how I could project. It's a dark winter night in in, in, in in a Norwegian valley where, you know, the pine tree is being like really bent because of this heavy uh, snow and wind. Yeah. Like heavy, harsh, sour, gray wind. We we went on a on real journey with uh, lots of, you know, we had several, like lots of tape echoes just, just yeah. <laughs> was like, I don't know what you kind of know that sound, I don't know, yeah. you know. Kind of having all these you know, things like in a solar galaxy and everything was just kind of parallelly going, and it was this hypnotic riff that I was just like, I really wanted to to see what happened if I took that my old like, background in metal, uh, this kind of minor chords like really you know uh, the wrong chords mm -hmm. and pair it up with because I used to play bossa nova when I was, I was a kid, so I, I did this like. I, I'm still really in love with the old, really haunting and dark and, and panoramic pictures of Jobim, Jobim and, and people like that when he writes kind of impressionist, big and long and psychedelic bossa nova. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to bring that into the picture to see how these, these things pair up, you know. These are the, the uh, subconscious streams yeah. underneath that kind of seeps through this that, that hypnotic groove, you know, and that kind of landscape. Next song, right off the album, I just want to see your face. Mm -hmm. We've been playing that music video a lot on oh, the show. Cool. I love it. I just, I can't get enough of it. Like, I, I'm in love with this whole entire album. Oh, I just want you thank know that. you so much. <laughs> so, that means a lot. Hey, what is that song about? You dive into this dark hole and suddenly just 
Oof, like a like a knife in your face or like a like a, you know hit yeah. in your you know it's like a hit of sunlight <laughs> in your face mm -hmm. it's like you're you're uh, making an, a physical effort to pull someone out of a dark side of your mind and it's kind of it's like the sunlight hitting you right. and that's what I wanted it to be like a pure sunshine like crazy a twisted uh, you know a twisted sunshine pop song mm -hmm. that kind of just like uh, haunts your ears with all the craziness going on but still there's uh, it's only about melody it's only about pop music the first line just goes it, I know it's like ridiculously kind of romantic and over the top and so you know so you know <laughs> sunshiny but you know the, the the sun is up and it's in your eyes and it's like ridiculously confronted with this dark opener of the record yeah. this epic just goes and goes and goes and everyone's like why what the hell do you open a record with such a long song and then it hits you know straight into this but i think that's really how this album should be introduced you know because the rest of it's like kind of is like one knife in your face and one knife in your face and one knife in your face <laughs> but this opening is like a and that's the kind of challenge we wanted to give people like if you stick with us through this you're gonna get rewarded in a way. <laughs> no. All right. So, how would you compare this album to your first full length that came out in 2005? I wanted to demand more of it myself, and, and maybe more of the listener, and I wanted people to be rewarded even more. I really want people to like. To, if you really give, you, if you really listen to this music, you're gonna hear stuff that you you don't hear in a lot of albums today. Now, I really want people to. Uh, I hope it can mean something to right. someone. You know. I really, really hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, you just recently played South by Southwest Festival. Mm -hmm. How was that? That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really. Uh, we've been there once before. Oh. This time, I really saw that there are lots of music fans there. People who are so passionate about music, music only, not all the bull around it. Right. We played lots of short sets, like poof, and then just left four songs and stuff like that. Uh, so we feel like it's a marathon, like playing normal shows when playing eight songs, you know? Have you ever been asked to score a movie or have you scored a movie? We've actually been talking about it, cool. yeah. My, my main problem is mainly that I spend so long time making something before I kind of feel like I feel okay with it. Okay. That's been the main problem. And I kind of felt like when I really, really been wanting to do something, it's been time to make a new record. And then all my time and all everything I have Kind of goes into it. Maybe, maybe we'll do it. I, I actually am thinking about it lately again. Yeah, we'll so, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have any bands that you're like listening to a lot right now? Since we're in DC, yeah. aren't Weird War from here? Yes. I really, really liked that band. I really did. I saw them in Oslo. I think they only came there once. I really liked them. Speaking of which, um, I like the new RTX record. I like new Neil Haggard stuff. I love everything that Neil does. <laughs> I like to really, really indulge in records when I first listen to them. It's not like something. I really, I might have only like 10 records that I really, really spend time on and forget about the rest and then you move on, maybe you move on to something else, but you always keep them with you, you know, for the later on in life, you pull them out again, like, oh, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Is there a message that you'd like to get out to your audience? Uh, I think music is, uh, should be a shared uh, experience. And I think that music should be uh, something that brings uh, people some kind of, I shouldn't really say a, a pretentious thing like hope, but I, I, I st I'm still saying it like uh, it should it should make people feel like alive again and should people make people like lift people up you know music is not a, a mundane thing it's not something that should just be it, it should be something that kind of wakes you up again you know reminding you that <laughs> life is can be pretty incredible <laughs> Can you say this in Norwegian? I was I was gonna suggest that we did all this in German. We're going into oh. this really strange. Hey, me, Serena Manish, or du ser på strictly global.